I'm not a huge fan of Nick Gurley of Reventure Consulting, and more than once, I've made videos calling him out for presenting to his audience a completely distorted view of the US housing market. And I can make my point clearly with one simple graph. So let's get right into it. Nick's recently been leaning on this chart showing a tight correlation between mortgage defaults and the unemployment rate. When unemployment goes up, mortgage defaults follow in lockstep. I'll let Nick explain the rest. It's not rocket science. As the unemployment rate gets to 4% and then 5% and then 6% and maybe even 7%, the mortgage default rate will go up. That's what history says. And when the mortgage default rate goes up, there's going to be more distressed selling situations. And that's when we'll finally see the pricing crash that Nick announced in 2021. I'm officially calling it as of the second week of June 2021, the U.S. housing market crash has started. Here's the thing, though. Nick gets this data from the MBA, the Mortgage Bankers Association, which publishes their own version of this graph every quarter as part of their quarterly delinquency report. Let me put both graphs up together. Do you notice the difference? Nick deletes 1979 through 1995 from the original MBA graph, hiding the fact that when unemployment skyrocketed in 1983, mortgage defaults barely grew. And when unemployment climbed again in the 1990s, mortgage defaults actually fell. Now, I know what you're thinking. So he didn't show the whole graph. So what? And you know what? I actually agree with you on that. It's stupid to attack anyone for cherry picking when the data set in question, literally decades of housing market metrics, is so huge. But here's what really pisses me off. If Nick had taken the time to consider the full MBA graph instead of just pulling the visual that props up his narrative, if he had actually addressed the question of why mortgage defaults and the unemployment rate have become so correlated in recent decades when they weren't before, he would have stumbled upon some real insights that could save his audience from making some very costly mistakes in the very near future. But since he decided not to, I guess I have to. So for my audience and for Nick's audience, here's the real story behind this graph, uh, sorry, this graph, and what it tells us about where home prices are headed in the face of a looming recession. And if at any moment you find yourself thinking, oh, that's a good point, please let me know by hitting the like button. Doing so is the best way you can spread this common sense analysis to others and help grow our channel. Thank you. A recession feels eminent. As I record this, crude oil is up to $94 a barrel, student loan payments averaging $300 per month are about to restart, the United Auto Workers is expanding their strike again, the yield inversion, which on average happens 12 months before a recession, happened 12 months ago, and oh yeah, the federal government is about to shut down with no end in sight. So a recession's coming, no question, and with a recession, home prices always fall, right? Well, no. This graph shows the median home price as recorded by the US Census Bureau since 1963. Eight recessions, marked by these gray areas, have occurred in that time. If we look strictly at the start and end points of each recessionary period, we see four recessions that produced home price drops, and four recessions that produced home price gains. And if we loosen up our perspective a bit to also consider the one or two years surrounding each recession, we see that really only one recession, the Great Recession, had a hugely negative impact on home prices. And it's worth noting while we're here that those home price declines actually started a full year before the broader economy went into recession. Two more recessions flattened home price gains for a few years, and five recessions had a very transient to almost no impact on the overall appreciation trends of the period. So the actual track record on how recessions impact home prices is mixed at best. And that's why Nick Gurley's pumping of this new graph is so thirsty. He needs to make a convincing argument that any recession is going to drag down home prices, and hence, any negative economic data can be used as evidence of a pending home price crash. And if you wanna believe that, go ahead. Sit on the sidelines all you want. You won't lose any money in real estate over the next few years, but also, you definitely won't make any. Meanwhile, those of us who actually invest in real estate are asking the question that actually matters. Will the coming recession crush home prices like in 2008, stall home appreciation like in 1970 or 1990, or have hardly any impact like in 1974, the early 80s, 2001, and 2020? And the answer is right here in the NBA graph that Nick Gurley literally tore in half to present his distorted picture of how the housing market and the broader economy relate. Let me show you what I mean. So we see a very high correlation between mortgage delinquencies, that's when homeowners stop paying their mortgage bills, and the unemployment rate, starting in 2006. Why? Well, we already know this story thanks to movies like The Big Short, or books like The Big Short, 
or if you're a nerd like me, this book, The Financial Crisis Inquiry Report, produced by the US Senate in 2011, which examines the specific causes of the global financial crisis. This fucker clocks in at 439 pages, so here's the TLDR. Trillions of dollars of mortgage debt was given to people who couldn't pay it back. And by the time the banks realized this, that worthless debt had already seeped into every corner of the global banking system. So in other words, the Great Recession was created by mortgage defaults. Mortgage defaults triggered that specific recession. So of course, mortgage defaults and unemployment are going to be correlated. In the case of the Great Recession, you can think of mortgage defaults being the input that fuels the recession and unemployment being the output the product of the recession. Notice in this little illustration that unemployment didn't cause the mortgage defaults. To the extent that there is a causal relationship between the job losses and the mortgage defaults, it's that defaults caused job losses and not the other way around. Don't buy that explanation? Remember, home prices started tanking a full year before the broader economy went into a recession. And even clearer, but different, example exists in the very brief recession of 2020. When the pandemic lockdown started, the US government made simultaneous decrees. One, businesses were not allowed to open. And two, homeowners did not have to pay their mortgages. So what happened? Lots of people got laid off and lots of homeowners stopped paying their mortgages. Very high correlation, but what's the causal relationship, if any? People lost their jobs because the government told businesses not to open and mortgage delinquencies suddenly shot up because homeowners, whether they lost their jobs or not, we're allowed to keep that money, and many did. Okay, so what's gonna happen this time? What's this coming recession going to look like? Maybe it'll look just like 2008. Maybe mortgage defaults will spike and bring down the global, or at least the US economy. That's definitely the case Nick Gurley makes. And he makes some compelling points about down payments and debt to income ratios for conforming loans. Conforming loans, also called agency loans, are loans backed by Fannie and Freddie those loans conform to the strict guidelines created by Fannie and Freddie. But conforming loans didn't get us into trouble in 2005, 2006, 2007. Subprime mortgages are what fucked us up back then. Back then, the practically unregulated subprime loan industry offered liar loans, ninja loans, no income loans, teaser rate loans, balloon payment loans, loan to value ratios over 100%, negatively amortizing loans, where the loan balance actually increases over time, and a whole litany of predatory loan products that were built to fail. By 2007, 23.5% of all loans written were one of these sketchy as fuck subprime loans. And then notice how quickly these products disappeared when we all wisened up. By 2008, the subprime lending industry was all but dead. You'll find this graph, by the way, on page 70 of the Financial Crisis Inquiry Report. The Dodd-Frank Wall Street Reform and Consumer Protection Act passed in 2010 functionally killed subprime lending. Title 14 of Dodd-Frank titled the Mortgage Reform and Anti-Predatory Lending Act put into place the regulations still followed today that ensure borrowers are actually qualified for the loans they take on, that mortgages are designed to succeed. So yeah, I'm not holding my breath for a 2008 style recession. Maybe we'll have a recession that looks like 1991, when home prices merely stalled for two years. When unemployment spiked in the early 90s, the mortgage delinquency rate actually declined. And look guys, we all remember the short recession of 2020. And I don't know about you, but I lived through the Great Recession. For context, I graduated from Columbia University in 2003 and bought my first home in 2009. So I remember firsthand what was going on. But the 90 to 91 recession? I mean, I was alive, but New Kids on the Block, MC Hammer, and Vanilla Ice all dropped albums in 1990, so my mind was elsewhere. Let's just float over to Wikipedia and see what they have to say about the 90-91 recession. Background. Throughout 1989 and 1990, the economy was weakened as a result of restrictive monetary policy enacted by the Federal Reserve. That sounds familiar. At the time, the stated policy of the Fed was to reduce inflation, a process which limited economic expansion. I hear that. The immediate cause of the recession was a loss of consumer and business confidence as a result of the 1990 oil price shock coupled with an already weak economy. Okay, now that sounds a lot more like what's happening right now, right? And what about the early 80s? Unemployment spiked to over 10%. Mortgage delinquencies grew modestly and home prices were hardly impacted. Wikipedia, background. A key event leading into the recession was the 1979 energy crisis, mostly caused by the Iranian revolution, which caused a disruption in the global oil supply, which saw oil price prices rising sharply in 1979 and early 1980. The sharp rise in oil prices 
pushed the already high rates of inflation in several major advanced countries to new double-digit highs, with countries such as the United States, Canada, West Germany, Italy, and the UK, and Japan tightening their monetary policies by increasing interest rates in order to control the inflation. Okay, I don't know about you, but what I'm learning is that recessions aren't all the same. They behave differently, they affect home prices differently, and the current economic climate looks a lot more like 1980 or 1989 than 2006. Subscribe for more thoughtful real estate analysis videos like this one.